Hey folks, this is IOE and we're back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Brez. He's in his Object 257. It's a tier uh, 10 game on Tundra. And I can't get over this, uh, the way this is done. I like this tank. I like the, the fact that it's all one color and then he's got the accent on the gun mantle. Because, of course, you want people to be shooting at your gun mantle. Wait, is that? Oh, that is good. I like that. I haven't seen one of those before, so. Um, I love the, <laughs> the fact that that's a periodic table. Hey, look, a Doom Box. Um, and you guys can call them whatever you want to. I'm always going to call them Doom Boxes because, of course, if you see one, you likely encounter your Doom. Um,. As he's obviously inspecting the other guy's camos. They're very good. They're, I like them. I like the camos in this game. So, um, before we get too far into this, I did want to say uh, Teespring campaign going on still. Five days left. Five. Count them. So, if you want a t-shirt at all, get it now. I do not know when the next time they're going to go on sale is. But probably not this year. So, I, I pretty much put this game up, campaign up so I could buy one. I bought one. If you want one, do it fast. Um, so it should be up in the top right hand corner right about now. Um, 50% of the profits, 50 of the profits go to the Canadian Heroes Foundation. 50% uh, will go, the other 50% will go into channel upgrades or hardware or something like that, depending on how much and um, what needs to be bought for the channel next. And so it's win-win-win as far as I'm concerned. You guys get great t-shirts, channel gets an upgrade, and the Canadian Heroes Foundation gets a donation, and they support Canadian veterans. So, yeah. Um, other things need to be mentioned is, I'm sorry I haven't put up a Battle Brothers game in a while. If you listen really close, you can still hear my wheezing and horrible breathing. It's because I'm still sick. Um, I'm not able to make it more more than about 10 minutes of of whatnot before everything goes a bit sideways and so a, a 30 minute Battle Brothers game is just not going to happen for a little bit um, hopefully next week it'll get back into it um, I, I really really want to play again which is driving me absolutely crazy but unfortunately that's the way it's going to be for right now um, yeah I think that's all the announcements as we get into the game what I, 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 what are you doing? Sorry about that. Um, I, 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 when did they do this? I didn't realize you could scratch up rocks now. It must be in the newest update and I've just never seen it before. Um, sorry about that. I, uh, I coughed and so I hit pause, but of course, because we we're already paused, it unpaused. Um, and so now I gotta write that down before I forget and, and. And you guys see me coughing, which I will be eternally sorry. Um, I don't know how our patent ended up in this predicament, but apparently we're now going to use him as a shield or just push him off the cliff and let him roll into the enemy team. I'm okay with either option because it will be hilarious. Uh, yeah, he's completely AFK. Like, I mean, even with all that, he was still just looking uh, directly behind him. Way back at the cap. I don't understand. If you're not going to play this game, don't play this game. Um, he's trying to reverse side scrape. The problem is that he's not quite in the right spot, and he didn't quite put the patent in the right spot to be able to let him reverse side scrape. Ah, oh, there we go. Knocking the patent down a little bit will help quite a bit with the, our reverse side scraping. Um, oop, had a shot on the Pantera. Still had a shot, but didn't elect to actually take it. There's no way that shot's going to go through because the Emil 2's turret is so heavily angled that uh, shooting at, at that kind of angle is just silly. Uh, do keep in mind it's an auto order though, so just because it's fired doesn't mean it can't fire again quite soon. 
Um, he's in fact just gonna go ahead and use. Oh, look at that! That is the perfect bunker for an object. As he gets shot, where did he get shot? Must have been Kapoor, or oh yeah, right in the side. He over angle too much, and the enemy did in fact put a shot through him. That's because of the fact that the if the pattern was more over in this direction, it would be a little bit better for him. Oh, underbelly! Unfortunately, the shot flew high and ricochets off the upper glaces of that meal. But being able to see the lower glaces of that meal is key. If Wait a second. Did that one fly high as well? Or is the, the lower glaces of that meal so steeply angled we can't get a shot in? Oh no, they both flew high. You can see the markings on that poor glaces. Okay. That's okay then. Yep, good job. So he's got the heat loaded now. As long as he's using heat, he cannot be aiming for tracks. Or the, the tracks will simply eat the shell. Um, with heat loaded, he can in fact put shots into the meal. Assuming he actually hits a part of the meal, of course. The meal has so far been spamming heat at us, so it's okay to spam heat back. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, though, this last shot took out our ammo rack, and with our uh, repair kit on cooldown, this is going to be an issue. Though, I don't know what just hit him, but something big did. Was that a doom box shot that just eradicated most of the meal? Um as the Progetto starts going aggressive on us. Unfortunately for the Progetto, him going aggressive on us is dumb and is not going to result in him getting what he wants. Uh, Yagzilla has joined the fray and is just going to come around the corner and shotgun some poor little guy. Oh, oh, apparently our Yagzilla can't hit anything from here. That's interesting. How do you miss with a Yagzilla? That's like... Uh, pain. There is pain in my head. I, I don't, it doesn't, I don't. Pfft. That's awesome. Good job. 430 coming around the corner. Obviously thought he was going to get the rear end of this push and it was gonna, just going to be a farm damage. Especially with the back end of a Yagzilla, right? Was not expecting us to be looking in his direction. Definitely wasn't expecting our first shell to light him on fire. And then uh, finish him off with a little ram there. It was well played and it was great. I really, really enjoyed that. Tiger 2. Uh, at this point in time in the game, we're not, you know, a lot of the games I show uh, end up being stomps. And so it's just all but clean up at the end. This is going to be a game, clearly, where we're going to have to fight tooth and nail. So at this point in time, it's no longer about just getting damage out. It's about taking out as many guns as fast as possible. And so that's what Brez is going to do. From now on, his only focus is going to be taking out guns as fast as he can take out guns. Um, and obviously surviving while he does it. But if he sees something on lower health, there's no doubt he's going to go for the thing on lower health. Unfortunately, he gets himself shot by the Pantera. And then the tired... Oh, good lord. This is going to be at the end of his game. If Unless something bounces here in a second. Ooh, apparently the Tiger 2 reloads slow enough that he gets himself out of there. And now he is down to a one shot. I think for everything left in the game. Um, and so he's going to have to play this really close from now on. Otherwise, his game is going to end early. I said I need to shift around my chair a little bit. I'm sorry. I know it doesn't really look professional when I do that. But uh, unfortunately, my back's been giving me issues. Uh, for the past little bit, um, I think it's been all the sleeping I've been doing in couches, trying to sit up so I can breathe all night, um, and uh, my back's been giving me some issues, so anyways, it's fine. The chair is designed to help with that. Um, he's, he's looking for an opening. Unfortunately, he doesn't really see one, and I doubt he's going to see one any time in the next minute or so. Uh, unless he starts making them. E50 pokes his head out. Not enough to give us anything real, though. You know, T10 looks like he wants to come around the corner, but of course, if T10 does that, he's going to get deleted. Unless, of course, the Yag Tire or Yagzilla looks away, 
which case, I mean, there was no reason the T10 shouldn't have come around the corner at that point in time. And yelling for help at this point in time is just silly. There's no one left to help you on the team. The entire team is dead, with the exception of the TBP, who most likely, based on our luck, is reloading. Um, he does complete a mission, though, which is cool. Unfortunately, with the T10 only having 34 health left, this next shell into him is going to be a waste. T uh, TVP seems to be unloading right now, but now he is dry. With the Yagzilla coming up here and the T10, this is going to go badly very fast. The Yagzilla has more than 1,000 health. We're not going to be able to... Ooh, maybe, maybe he wants to kill that T10, but if the T10 is not going to show himself, then... I think he really needs to switch over to an HE shell here. Oh, never mind. T10 gets taken out. So now he's looking to go into the Yagzilla. Yagzilla is currently distracted. Takes the opportunity and puts one into him. And now he's going to be able to wait until the Yagzilla is looking the wrong way. And put one through his uh, upper uh, superstructure. This, of course, is the only reason, or the reason he's using heat is because of the fact that he needs to shoot through the superstructure. Um, and these two guys platoon up, and this is a great, um, a great thing. First off, we're one kill off of a Brothers in Arms, um, and there's only two enemies left in the game, so this is probably going to happen. Oh, assuming these two can survive, of course. The other part of the Brothers in Arms is you need to live. Pantera is on this side. Unfortunately, the enemy Type 4 Heavy is probably still on the other side of the map. Even if he's been charging this way the entire time. Oh, as the TVP sees an opening and takes out the Pantera. Uh, even if the enemy Type 4 has been charging this way the entire time, he's not going to get here before these guys exit the hill. TVP looks like he's going high. To get some eyes out, having not seen anything uh, it, dangerous in the area, now Bros is going to push out. We're going to speed this up a little bit though, because uh, otherwise it could be it could exceed my uh, my lungs capacity for waiting this game out. Um, potentially five minutes left in the game, and I hope we're not going to spend all those five minutes hunting down the um, the Type Four. Though I must note, he did complete his mission, which is cool, right? Anytime you manage to complete a mission in a game, he's on full health. Holy crap. Okay. Is he AFK? Is that what's going on? Yeah, it seems like he's AFK. Um, our ally is ignoring our request to not shoot him. Um, I don't know why we would need him to not shoot him, but not killing him would be really, really, really TVP. Why would you do that? You've already got a Rattle Walters. Nine kills isn't going to get you anything. If you give the ninth kill to us, however, that gives us a Brothers in Arms, which gives you another medal. But by you killing him, all that does is deprive you of another medal and give you a tiny bit more experience in the end screen. This is a dumb move. And it's kind of a, a, a jerk move considering the fact that we were such a great team before that. Remind me why again why this game isn't toxic. Okay. Let's jump over to the end screen and just forget all about this. This was an ace tanker, hand of God, bruiser, arsonist, a uh, fire for effect, shell proof, he goes against the Confederate, a steel wall, and high caliber awards. Um Yep, yeah, even if he had not killed if even if he killed the type four uh, he still would have ended up with a confederate award 
so overall, this was a good game. Um, I don't understand the motivation of the TVP to take the ninth kill for no good reason. Um, I don't think the last 300 damage or whatever that he did to that Type 4 was going to complete a mission for him. I don't think it, like, you know, it didn't raise his experience a lot. I think it was just a dick move. And, um, especially when someone requests that you not take the last kill. Like, I mean, it just... I don't know. Maybe he didn't understand the language, or maybe he was just being a jerk. I don't know. But either way, um, it, it's still annoying, right? So, but, good lord. 2,000 damage blocked by armor. That's amazing. And, of course, the 6k damage club award. Good job, sir. Now, by the way, some of you may not have noticed, and some of you may have, I've been awarding people 6k damage rolls in the Discord. If you were a member of the Discord and you have achieved a 6k damage re record, um, combined damage between actual damage done and spotting damage, um, which is over here, then I will be uh, awarding you a 6k damage roll. And it's, it's like, you know, it's a badge of honor, really, is all that it does. It doesn't do anything in the channel, except, you know, it's an elite group, and there's only a few of you in it. If you are in it, please send me a replay, um, or send me a um, link to a game where you did achieve 6k damage on the channel, and I will gladly put, you know, assign the honorary rank to you as well. Other than that, thank you so much, Baraz. If you are on the Discord, I'll definitely be giving you that role soon. Um, and if you're not on the Discord, join the Discord. Get an honorary title. And uh, we'll see you all then. Thank you so much. Have a great day. This is IOE Throughout. <laughs>